What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about how to lose weight and keep it off. Some of you have read my book, Fat Loss Forever. Many of you have not, but one of the continuous themes I've talked about in a lot of my videos and articles I've written, as well as Fat Loss Forever itself, is the theme of how difficult it is not just to lose weight, but it's actually more difficult to just keep it off. Now, the statistics range depending on what kind of metrics you use, but if we look at people who lose at least 10% of their body weight and then follow up with them at one year post weight loss, less than 50% of them will keep that off. And I think the number is closer to 30. Of those people who put it back on, a significant portion of them will actually add more weight than they lost. And if you get really tightly constrained on this data in terms of like looking out past three years, you see anywhere from like 85 to 95% weight relapse. So what makes it so difficult to lose weight? And of the people who do lose weight and keep it off, because there are people who do, what do they have in common? Are they following a particular diet? lifestyle, what are they doing? And so this new study was a systematic review of articles or studies that looked at people who lost weight and kept it off and what characteristics they had. And then they attempted to synthesize that into what characteristics popped up most frequently. Interestingly, as part of this, no one diet emerged as a clear winner in terms of weight loss and weight maintenance. That means like low carb, plant-based, intermittent fasting, you know, flexible dieting, whatever, nothing emerged as being superior to any other diet for adherence or for weight loss maintenance. So that was very interesting. And that's supported by two meta-analyses looking at different diets and finding that weight loss past two years really isn't different between these diets and adherence really isn't different between these diets. And in fact, both of those meta-analyses concluded that the individual should choose the diet that they prefer and that allows them to adhere most strictly because the meta-analysis that did look at, okay, of these people on these different diets, how did adherence make a difference? They found a very linear association between dietary adherence, regardless of diet, between people who were adherent to their diets and people who lost weight. So basically, if you can stick to it, it'll probably work depending on what methodology you choose in terms of the actual diet itself. So let's talk about the stuff that was actually most closely associated with dietary success in terms of losing weight and keeping it off. The main one that came up most frequently in all these studies was the theme of continuous monitoring. The most frequent things that came up were self-monitoring in terms of body weight, uh, using food scales, tracking calories, being cognizant of portions. So those were the most frequent things that came out. But there's other forms of self-monitoring you can do in terms of, for example, if you're doing intermittent fasting, that can be a form of self-monitoring because you are choosing your feeding window. Same thing for a ketogenic diet or a low-fat diet. You are doing some form of self-monitoring, but calorie tracking and portion control were the ones that came up most frequently amongst people who lost weight and kept it off. Interestingly, a lot of subjects identified that calorie counting and portion control gave them a way to be able to enjoy eating out while still hitting their goals. And if you go and look at, they actually also looked at people who did not keep weight loss off. One of the things that they said that they struggled with was poor planning, peer pressure when eating out, and lack of being able to adhere to a diet or feeling very constrained. So you can see a little bit of a difference in flexible mindset beginning to emerge as well. So another couple things that were interesting in terms of continuous monitoring were uh, people who tended to lose weight and kept it off were much better about meal planning and also accommodating for social events, either by bringing their own food or by pre-planning and looking at, you know, if I'm going out to eat somewhere, what do they have? What am I going to choose to eat? What do I have the flexibility for? Those sorts of things. Things that we talk about a lot. In fact, I think one of the things that I tend to harp on is that if you look at some of these holidays, like for example, Thanksgiving, every year I hear the same things. That people weren't prepared for the holidays, 
that they didn't feel like they had the options. It's not like Thanksgiving comes up and bites you out of nowhere. It's not like Christmas comes up and bites you out of nowhere. You know these events are going to happen. You need to have a game plan for that. And people who lose weight and keep it off tend to have game plans for social events so that they can still kind of engage in that self-monitoring but not go crazy and overconsume. Another big characteristic was intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic being more important than extrinsic. So intrinsic was um, they felt driven to make a change, they felt driven to exercise, they felt driven to engage in these behaviors for the good of their health. Extrinsic motivators were wanting to look better, you know, like looking at pictures of what they might look like. Now here's something that's really interesting. Participants who lost weight and kept it off also talked about reinventing themselves a lot, meaning they fully adopted this new lifestyle that they took on to lose the weight. If you just do a diet, after it's over, you look at it as a start and end point and not a lifestyle. When you go back to doing what you did before, it's very likely that you're gonna regain that weight because you're no longer practicing the habits and behaviors that are required to lose that weight and keep it off. So it's kind of like a lot of people look at diets with defined endpoints, kind of like an antibiotic. You know, if you're sick, you take it, and it goes away, you don't have to keep taking it. Um, and you kind of have to think about it more like a type one diabetic taking insulin. <laughs> you have to continue to take it in order not to get sick. Just like if you want to lose weight and keep it off, you have to continue engaging in those behaviors. And so it has to become part of this new identity and you have to reinvent yourself in terms of how you view your lifestyle. If you go back to engaging in the lifestyle habits and behaviors that you did before you started this new lifestyle, then you're not gonna keep it off. So extrinsic motivators could kind of be looked at like vanity, you know, surface level stuff. People, there's a certain stigma around that, but at the end of the day, if it helps somebody achieve a goal, I mean, I don't really have a problem with it and it's useful to know. So if that means, you know, having a picture, um, you know, of what you want to look like or having a picture of what you don't wanna look like, whatever helps get you motivated to continuously engage in the behaviors that are needed in order to achieve your goal, then hey, do whatever you need. Another thing that was very evident amongst people who lost weight and kept it off was goal setting and continuous reevaluation of those goals. So it wasn't just a, okay, I've hit my goal weight, now I do whatever. It's okay, I've hit my goal weight, now this is my next thing. And it was as simple as uh, planning meals for the week or how many times am I gonna go exercise this week? Small things, but that kept them on the path towards doing these behaviors and lifestyle that allowed them to lose the weight in the first place. They also talked about having social support and what tended to work best for people was the type of support where um, you know, somebody was engaging in the lifestyle with you. So somebody's doing the diet with you or going to the gym with you or giving you a compliment saying, hey, you're looking really healthy, you're looking great, or you know, I see you in here working hard. You know, those kinds of things tend to be really constructive, whereas criticism actually tended to be much less helpful. When we talk about criticism, it might be something like a friend saying, oh, well, that diet you're on, you know, it's actually not that great uh, because X, Y, Z. You know, they may be well-intentioned, but by providing that criticism, they're actually taking away from somebody's potential goal. Whereas if they just said, wow, I see you being really consistent with this, that seems to be helping you a lot. I'm really glad that you found something that you are passionate about and working hard at. That's an example of one sort of uh, extrinsic motivation or demotivator versus a motivator. Now, this brings us to the most important thing, in my opinion or one of the most important things, the characteristic of enduring challenges, they called it. Now, when it came to intrinsic challenges, those were things like, um, you know, feeling like they had a lack of time or emotional eating, self-doubt, those sorts of things. Whereas external challenges were things like work stressors, life stressors, uh, death in the family, divorce, those sorts of things really kind of provided uh, the bigger extrinsic challenges. Both were difficult to navigate, but it was the people who were able to navigate them and not give in to the desire to turn to food as a comfort. Uh, and they did say that having like structure 
was a big part of them being able to navigate those things. So planning, having structure, I mean, it makes sense. If you go home after a really stressful day at work, for example, and you don't have anything prepared in your fridge, what are you gonna to turn to? Comfort food, most likely, because it's easy to get to and easy to consume. Whereas if you had you know, some meals prepared or some foods prepared that were lower caloric density, you know, perhaps you could use those instead of turning to food as a comfort. Now there was more stuff, but I wanna switch focusing to where they talked about the lessons they learned from people who did regain the weight. Uh, I'm gonna read a section here. and I think it's really, um, really telling. Weight regainers spoke of finding it hard to prioritize tracking their intake and dedicating time to exercise. They frequently cited turning to emotional eating during stressful situations or due to boredom and using food as a coping mechanism. They also highlighted a lack of planning as counterproductive and found it challenging to try and resist urges and temptations. Some also found it hard to put their weight loss above the needs and wishes of their peers and gave in to social pressure. Further barriers to weight loss maintenance included not wanting to waste food and feeling deprived due to dietary over restriction. And here's where it gets interesting. Weight fluctuations and everyday stressors also consistently decreased motivation. Participants felt that being able to maintain their weight loss negatively impacted their self-esteem, sometimes leading to secret eating and binge eating. That rings so true for me in my experience with clients. The first thing I want to talk about is the lack of planning. I mean, this comes up again and again and again and again. Now, when I say planning, I'm not necessarily saying you got to have, you know, eat out of a Tupperware container all the time. But what I'm saying is like for me, example, a planning of what I do is I always make sure that I have lean protein sources to choose from. Um, and if I have that, you know, you can find carbohydrates and fats. That's, that's not a difficult thing. My sort of planning is one, I tend to eat kind of the same things for breakfast and lunch, so I can have a little bit of flexibility based on what I want for dinner. And like I said, I always have lean protein sources available because those are satiating, uh, those can be difficult to find like on the fly, and it's pretty easy to find carbohydrates and fats. So while it's not super, super regimented, it allows me enough structure to be successful but also the flexibility to eat what I want. And the other thing that really stood out here that I want to talk about was weight fluctuations. I see this so much, especially in our Carbon Diet Coach Facebook group. Uh, people really stress out over day-to-day -day weight fluctuations. It is very normal to fluctuate one to 2% in body weight per day. Now what happens is people will go on a diet for a week or two weeks or whatever, or maybe they've even been on it for a while. They'll get on the scale, they'll be up by three pounds, and it will demotivate them. They'll feel like nothing they're doing is working, and so they don't have the motivation, that extrinsic motivation, to keep engaging in those behaviors, and they fall back into poor behaviors, whereas people who keep it off see that fluctuation, acknowledge it, but continue to engage in that behavior and have the wherewithal to understand that one, it's a fluctuation, and two, if they keep engaging in those behaviors, it's eventually gonna normalize. This is actually why I like weighing in every single day. Now, some people might say, well, that's really stressful. It's stressful for me to see my weight bounce around. If you weigh in every single day and take the average of your weights for the week, and you're weighing in the first thing in the morning after you've voided your bladder, all that kind of stuff, what you'll find is that while day-to-day -day fluctuations will bounce around, your weekly average will be much less prone to big fluctuations and is a pretty good reflection of what is happening with your dietary intake. And we've had so many people in the Carbon Facebook group that have said that by tracking their weight every single day and looking at the average, it's really gotten over their fear of seeing weight fluctuations, and it's also stopped them from being so demotivated from seeing weight fluctuations. So, really cool study, really cool systematic review. It's pretty much in line with what I talk about in Fat Loss Forever, and actually, I have to give myself a little bit of a humble brag. The lead author on this paper actually reached out to me and said that reading Fat Loss Forever was the inspiration for her to pursue her PhD, which is pretty freaking cool. And it's cool to see that the evidence is lining up kind of with what I've recommended in Fat Loss Forever. And again, I think it's really important that when you look at this stuff, don't look at like a single dietary intervention as the cure for obesity or the treatment for obesity. It's really about creating a new lifestyle. If you're somebody who's overweight or struggle with obesity, it's gonna take a reinvention of yourself. 
It's gonna take uh, continuous monitoring and you are going to have to endure challenges. And you must know that up front that it will be very, very difficult. And that's why on the back cover of Fat Loss Forever, the final statement is, I might butcher it a little bit, but it's basically be consistent, be tenacious, be persistent, never quit. Because those things, enduring those challenges is what's gonna allow you to truly make a long-term lifestyle change. All right, guys, I want to shout out Marie Spreckley, who sent me this paper. I think I pronounced her last name right, who is lead author on this paper and gave me, um, really inflated my ego for the day when she told me that. Uh, but huge shout out to her. It's so awesome to see people doing more research on this particular topic because it's something I'm very passionate about. And I think it's a really, really important topic. And we can learn a lot from the people who have lost weight and kept it off. If you guys want to read the full study for yourself, the link is in the description. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to purchase one of my educational books, like Fat Loss Forever, uh, you can click the links in the description. Also, our nutrition coaching app, which employs a lot of these strategies. Carbon Diet Coach, link is also in the description. Hope you guys have a great week. Thanks.